Yeah, and like you said, you know, you got to meet your idols and you eventually went on the road. And we talked a little bit about, you know, OVW, <clears throat> but like when you started becoming a wrestler, I've had so many people talk about the training process. What was your experience like as far as training goes? Well, now you first, you got to understand, I was a um, completely different kid. Uh, I was, I was very shy very very shy and not to everybody and all things but if i knew you you know i'd be myself but i was very shy to two people i didn't know uh danny davis will tell you the day i went to meet him to talk about joining the school i couldn't even look at him in the eyes you know i was looking down nervous wreck scared kid but you know so i, I wasn't really in the weightlifting or anything at that time i was a, a 19 year old kid partying, you know, drinking, smoking pot, raising hell, uh, you know, wasn't really in shape at all. So it was really tough on me because, uh, but it was the best thing that happened to me too. But it, it was rough, man, in the beginning. You know, the ring is not what a lot of people thought it was in those days. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, the ring was hard, man. It had some give to it, but it was hard. And those damn ropes, uh, you know, the ropes were just a wire cable run through a damn garden hose, you know, and that shit was stretched tight by the buckles in the corner, man. I remember the first night I learned how to hit the ropes. The next morning, my back looked like somebody probably just took a kendo stick and beat on me all night long. Oh, I mean, I bruises from the lines of the ropes just because my body wasn't used to it. So, I mean, I mean, it was tough. I mean, I literally got the shit beat out of me for a long time. <laughs> it was, you know, Danny didn't take, Danny did everything the right way, though. Or Danny wasn't abusive. But Danny toughened you up or you was going to quit. You know, you were going to make it or you wasn't. It was up to you. But he didn't take it easy on you. It, you know, everybody was treated the same. And, uh, and then if you wanted to work more, you could always stay after it. A lot of us a lot of us did that. You know, class might be two or three hours, uh, seven days a week. Uh, and the days we had shows, we had class earlier that day. You know, if he was working, tough shit. <laughs> take off work, you know, uh, whatever, but be there. Because uh, that's how you learn, and everybody start. You know, you would uh, uh, once you're there for a little bit, then you would start going. You know, help set up the ring for the shows and whatnot. You did everything. Uh, then you went from that to uh, uh, you know security guard. You know, things of that nature. And then I think I don't know if everybody started out at Danny's the intern, but I know a bunch of people did. And that, that's what I started out as uh, the intern. You just wore the the uh, like the doctor's outfit with the mask. You know, so. Man, but the training was the, the training was pretty rough for a while, and then once you but you know you were young man we didn't really care, you know you, it, it, that was the thing it, it toughened you up quick if you wasn't tough uh, or it made you quit you know one, one, you know a few, a few things happened pretty quick because it was pretty hard I mean it wasn't it wasn't like it was when Danny trained uh, I mean man I've heard stories of back in those days you know back in the, uh, what, late 50s, 60s, whatnot, man, they were brutal. <laughs> you know, yeah. They were real brutal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but, you know, it wasn't where people was beating on you. But in the ring, I remember Danny, I bet I, Danny chopped me maybe 50, 60 times one night in the match. And I was never allowed to give it to him back. You, you was never allowed to do nothing until you learned how to take it. But Danny had a way of teaching you. I always called him like old Mr. Miyagi in a way. He had a way of teaching you shit. You didn't know he was learning. Then all of a sudden you just, oh, okay. Oh. And, and that's the thing you either got it or you didn't and it's hard to explain that but you, you either get it or you don't you know and if you get it mentally then you learn the psychology part of it and boom man you're, you're rocking and rolling uh, if you don't you know it just it's, it's it's rough on you yeah it definitely seems like you got that old school kind of experience with with how to work and how to sell and how to how to move in the ring and and, and work with your opponent it's uh, it well, really that's where the psychology now was. You know, I, I never try to brag on a lot of anything, but I, I could sell. Uh, that was one thing I was really, really good at, and that's why I worked a lot of, uh, especially in the early days, a lot of WWE guys that were sent to us. You know, we we you know myself, several of us. There's a handful of us who worked those guys a lot. You know, we wasn't their per se actual trainers, but they got training with us in the ring because, uh, you know, we knew for one, you didn't hurt them. You know, they're WWE guys. <laughs> You got to protect them, but you had to teach them. In those guys in those days, John Cena, uh, Randy Orton, you know, Lesnar, those guys, I, I guarantee you that, you know, they, I know they all, they all respect and love their days in OVW, but that, 
I, I think a lot of those guys are still in the business today because of that. Because, you know, you learn the old way, you learn the tough way, and, you know, you learn the old school, and that gives you longevity in the business. Because if you got it, then you learn how to protect yourself. Um, but if you didn't get it, you might not last two or three years, and then, boom, you're probably broke and, you know, working as a cashier somewhere. Yeah, so I mean. Because those guys, we trained in a dungeon, man. It was uh, no nowhere, you know, summertime, hottest, hottest, hottest piss. Uh, not much heat to say of in the wintertime. You know, and and uh, I think honestly, I think the story behind that is I think Jim Ross, who who was in the head of the uh, developmental program, I believe at the time with Cornette, who was here with us and Danny and whatnot. But uh, I think Jim Ross had come to visit one time and and, and uh, come to the arena, and he, he said, "Vince can't see this. <laughs> it's it's had to move. You know, it had to move to a better facility because he thought, you know." This is a little bit too rough, but I mean, I think it's great. You know, it, it toughened you up. It, it 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 showed how much kind of like desire you was gonna, you know, you build a lot of desire because you know the, the last thing you want to do is you know be there the rest of your life, <laughs> not OVW, but just in that facility. 